all know that entrepreneurs, and particularly women entrepreneurs, are one of the fastest growing forces in our economy. Many of them need a coach. So joining us now is a woman who teaches the coaches, Karen Kessler from chooseresults.ca. Welcome, Karen. Uh, thanks for having me. Okay, so the first question, does everybody need a coach? Well, that all depends on how much time, money, and energy you have. Mm -hmm. As we know that it, as we learn, trial and error is the way a lot of us attempt to do it, but it takes a long time. And growing is uncomfortable. So sometimes you actually get it right but because it doesn't feel comfortable. You think you got it wrong. Mm -hmm. So you can totally miss the path to your success. When you've got a model to follow and a coach that's someone that's already taken those steps, it's so much easier to have someone and say, whoa, wait, you've got it. Just keep going right there. Saves you a lot. I think many young business entrepreneurs, though, have no money. They're just starting out, and they think that's something expendable. And I think you would argue that maybe it isn't. Oh, my goodness. I attempted to do it that way. I said, you know what? I'm a smart person. I spent 13 years in government. I've managed restaurants. How hard could it be? <laughs> so I know I retired from the government and decided to go full-time in the business, and we were way in debt before we actually figured out. In fact, I had to get to the point where I almost couldn't make my lease mm. before I was willing to reach out and say, you know what, um, I actually don't know what I'm doing. I'm smart and I'm talented, but in this case, I don't know what I'm doing. So, so then is it better to call the coach before you Oh, launch yes. your business? Yeah. Have a plan before you leap. One of the things I specialize in is those transition plans. Mm -hmm. when you know you want to take the leap, come chat. Let's figure out actually what you need, what are the steps, and do it in a way that manages your risk so you can still pay your mortgage and you can still put your kids in school. In a perfect world, then, you would have a coach before you launch. Yes. And then at what other stages would you call in somebody for an intensive bit of help? So what we normally recommend is you find a mentor that you want to be better than, and you work with them. And as soon as you get close, find your next mentor. You should always have a mentor. And then how you work with that mentor will change. Some more intensive work and sometimes just monthly check-ins. What's the difference between a mentor and a coach? Uh, mentoring is a process of sort of taking someone under your wing, being there, giving advice. Coaching is much more intensive and results-based. You're looking to get this goal by this time, and all resources are put towards that. How has coaching changed over the last 10 years? Because I know it used to be just this, this label that was sort of stuck on everybody. And I, th I knew business people who were starting something, and they were very leery about that thinking yeah. that that was a uh, coach. Uh. Yeah. The word coach is very broad. Mm -hmm. Anybody can technically hang out a shingle and said, you know what, I'm easy to talk to. I'll be a coach. And what we're finding that only people, if you don't have a mentor yourself, when you become a coach, it's really only the executive coaches who are very results based that are making 60K or more on average around the world. Uh, folks that come out and decide to be life coaches without any uh, designations behind them without training behind them they're having a tough time okay so you're saying that it's a results it should be a results oriented um, initiative the whole thing so do you offer if you don't get results we don't get paid kind of thing yes really yes with my boards and designations and my training behind me if you don't get your results i don't get paid wow I've never heard of that. <laughs> no. I like that model. <laughs> so, so now it's come to a point where you're teaching coaches. Yes, mm -hmm. and have been for the last four years. So that is a change in the business. It's very much changed. So our there are no designating bodies in Canada. They're either in the UK or in the States. So we're with the boards in the States. And we have the highest standards in the world for our coaches. Standards that you don't even see in other professional organizations. This is the new wave of coaching where we're working not just with the talk pieces, but we're working it deep in, in the actual programming that causes behavior and really holding space for folks to make change. Okay, so I I signed up for a webinar um, with a coach from um, uh, Sydney, Australia, um, Grace Lever, Grace Lever, I think her name is, is, and I'm listening to it. And I was getting so frustrated because it was like there's nothing new here, mm -hmm. and at the end you're just trying to sell me your your program, right. which I we you know I admire, your, but you know, the pitches. It's like 
we, I will teach you, you know, about the funnel, about how you need to do this. I've heard all this stuff before. Yep. There was nothing new, and I spent 90 minutes waiting to learn something. So how do you, if you're looking for somebody to do that, how do you ferret through all those people? All that stuff? Yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. Make sure that they're going to be willing to have a conversation with you personally before you ever work with anyone, mm -hmm. and that they're going to qualify you. Because the thing is... Unless they're going to work with changing your actual programming, you're bringing in old programming. Mm -hmm, like you guys exactly. are, you guys are fabulous at what you do, and you were journalists and and on film for a long time. When you, I remember when I was on the show before, you were just new entrepreneurs, and so you were learning all these new things. That's new programming. You guys have Still now learning. <laughs> exactly. So it's a process, <laughs> and my specialty is to take folks with other programming, and they want new. They want to be an entrepreneur and want those pieces. So if someone's not willing to do that, they're just giving you what. So if I were to hire a coach yes. as a business person, would I be looking for a coach that had had experience in my field? They've already had success in what you've already done or what you're looking to do. Sorry. They've already succeeded in what you want to do. So if I'm a restaurant owner, I come to you and I say, I want a coach for restaurants. Right. So I've had people come to me and they're not doing what my specialty is. So I talk with them and then I've got lots of contacts. So I will put them, I'll put them in touch with the person who can mentor and coach them. Okay. So talk about if I want to become a coach or if I'm out there. So your program is what, a year long, 12 month program? Yeah. We're just launching a 12 month program. The graduates come out and this is what we were learning. We give them the tools to be a fabulous coach. To be a fabulous entrepreneur is a separate set of skill sets. So the 12-month program will literally hold their hand from where they are to where they want to go and blow right through that 60K ceiling in their first year. Wow. Did we do that? No, I don't think we did that. <laughs> we didn't have a coach, though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so there's three really important factors. Um, women coaches especially have to make sure that they're fulfilled as a woman. Otherwise, their businesses will suck the soul right out of them. They have to learn how to be a skillful CEO, how to make decisions strategically, and how to do the right thing at the right time. And then they need to be a master coach so they can guarantee their results in writing. Let's just cycle back to be fulfilled as a woman. <laughs> I, I don't understand the correlation oh, between my goodness. being fulfilled as a woman or have the life sucked out of you. What What are you talking about? You were complaining just last week that you're having the life sucked out of you because you're sitting at the computer all day and doing too much work. I told you you needed to work smarter. Help her. <laughs> I will absolutely help you. But, so but, he, here's the thing. But what does that have to do with being a woman? Oh. oh, I see what you mean. Everything. So when it comes to women and when we do things, we need to do them from that feminine way. There's actually a lot more strength and power as women when our physiology, us as a woman, we actually come at it from that direction. And that means that everything has to be done with three things. You need to make sure that you're actioning in a way that creates pleasure for you and fills your soul. And when you do that, you actually get joy. When you get that, you actually have what you do gives you more energy than it takes from you. But we're taught and between school and workplace to do things in a masculine way. I've got my to-do list. And when I've got all that done, then I'll go get my massage. Then I'll go out with the girls. Pleasure has to wait. I have to do work first, then pleasure. Work family then pleasure. Exactly. So as an entrepreneur, when it's you and just you, if you attempt to continue to have your life in those boxes, your business will suck the soul out of you. And even if you make money, you'll hate it. So, I mean, we love what we do, um, but we were learning, as you said, a whole new business side because we'd been salaried employees right. before, right? So to create something and well, you know, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, exactly. Blown. Mind, <laughs> mind blown frequently. So it's been, it, it's been great. Here we are. Um, so, you know, coming up to three years, which is, it, it's just good to survive in the media for three years. So how do people connect with you to either, to do um, either of the certification programs that you have? The best thing to do is to go to chooseresults.ca and um, hit on the apply now button or contact us. And then I can have a conversation with them. I offer a 20 minute consult just to see if this is for them. Because mm -hmm. if it's not, I'd rather point them in another direction. Okay. And if they need a coach, they can also contact you and say, oh, yeah. I'm in this business. Can you refer somebody? Absolutely. I've got a whole bunch of amazing grads who are doing really well. <laughs> <laughs> well, Karen Kessler, thank you so much for joining us and clearing up all kinds of questions that we had. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. When we come back, how do you stop 
ticket scalpers. Well, Eric Alper has a few suggestions. This is what she said on The Jewel. Stay with us. She might just change her life. 